Translation of the piece about to be recited, titled Incomparable Bond. None can ever understand the one who is the first and the last. What is the worth of my life? I would lay the universe at your feet. It is your merciful glance that has elevated me beyond imagination. Otherwise, how worthy was I to even utter words in your praise? Maula, how do I even begin to conceptualize our love? If I am the pen, you are the ink. When I declare my faith, you are my witness. You are my boat and I a passenger. You are my destination and I the traveler. I am a bird and you are the aspiring wind beneath my wings. And I fly with your name. I am a song and you are my voice. You are an open door of love, I a blank wall. I am a prayer in the heart to which you are an eternal answer. How do I even begin, Maula, to conceptualize our love? I am a beggar with an empty vessel. I the hand and you the lines of destiny. I am a hopeless shadow, you a shade in scorching heat. I am your servant, you are an open door of love, and I am nothing. How do I even begin, Maula, to conceptualize our love? I'm not worthy enough. I desired to sing and write in your praise. Accept my humble submission and forgive my faults and errors. Ya Maula.
Yalimadet, welcome, bienvenue. Thank you for tuning in to another Friday Night Reflections. My name is Saba Rojani, and I'm honored to welcome all of our Jamaati members, multi-faith family members, and everyone tuning in from across the globe. I'm coming to you from my beautiful hometown in Ottawa, and it is such a pleasure to be hosting tonight's episode. I also hope you all had a wonderful family day weekend and got a chance to spend some time together and go out. 
perhaps you were able to enjoy the snow. I, on the other hand, um, decided to stay with my family indoors, played with my puppies, and of course ate a lot of my mom's delicious cooking. I hope you all also enjoyed last week's episode on COVID vaccines, where our panel of experts answered many of your questions on the vaccines. Now, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us on the survey at the end of the show, and we will direct your questions to our healthcare experts. You also can check out the COVID Corner page on iicanada.org, which has a lot of great up-to-date information to keep you and your family informed. You know, some of my friends and family members were able to get their vaccines this week as healthcare workers, and it looks like we are ramping up to get vaccines for more groups very shortly. I was able to get mine a couple days ago, and I'm so grateful for it. This week, we also saw the Mars Perseverance rover land in a crater on Mars, looking for signs of ancient life and collecting soil samples. And if you've also been stuck at home and haven't been driving much lately, think of Farah Alibe of Montreal, who was driving this week. She was in charge of remotely driving the rover on Mars for NASA. Congratulations on making history, Farah. So let's talk about tonight. I'm so excited for tonight's episode entitled A Symphony of the Soul, as we explore devotional expressions from the Ismaili tradition. Can you believe it? It's almost been a year since Jamaat Khanas were first closed, and just like all of you, I'm really missing the feeling of being in Jamaat Khana and being together with all of you. And because of that, I'm so looking forward to hearing from Dr. Shafiq Virani on how we can look to our traditions in forms of devotional expressions to find strength in our faith to traverse these turbulent times. We will then hear from some of you on this topic and finish, as always, with some musical expressions. And now, I warmly welcome back to the show Dr. Shafiq Virani. Dr. Virani is a professor of Islamic studies at the University of Toronto. He was previously on the faculty of Harvard University and was later the head of world humanities at Zayed University in the UAE. After earning a joint honors degree with distinction in religious studies in Islamic studies at McGill University, he completed his PhD at Harvard University. His scholarly work has received awards from the United Nations, the Organization of the Islamic Conference, the Middle East Studies Association, the Foundation for Iranian Studies, Harvard University, the International Farabi Prize, and the British Kuwait Friendship Society Prize. He is also the recipient of the International Book of the Year Award from the Government of Iran. Professor Virani's research and publications focus on Islamic history, philosophy, Sufism, Shiism, and Islamic literatures in Arabic, Persian, and South Asian languages. And with that, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Virani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yali Madad. The last time I had the opportunity to speak with everyone on Friday Night Reflections, we discussed the gracious guidance and blessings in our beloved Imam's Talika of March 28th. I began by telling the story of another pandemic, the bubonic plague that reached India in 1897, killing some 10 million people there alone. Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah offered his personal bungalow as a lab to his friend, Dr. Waldemar Hafklein, who then developed the first plague vaccine. What I didn't have a chance to tell you is what happened next. Though Dr. Hafklein had produced a vaccine, he faced another major challenge, getting people to take it. Rumors were rampant, and many Indians even believed it was a British colonial plot to poison the public. When hardly anyone would get vaccinated, Dr. Hafkind turned to the Imam with one more request. Your Highness, your followers obey your every word. If you can convince them to vaccinate, others will follow their lead. Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah was only 20 years old. How would he persuade the population to get immunized? In his memoirs, he describes this as his first battle in life. He writes, I had to act swiftly and drastically. The impact of the plague among my own people was alarming. Most Mumbai Ismailis lived in Mandvi, where the disease was spreading like wildfire. 
the imam called members of both the Jamaat and the general public to Aga Hall, and had Dr. Hafkine give a speech, explaining the vaccine to them. When the imam saw that everyone was still petrified and unwilling, he rolled up his sleeve and told the doctor to vaccinate him. This stunned the audience. However, seeing their imam being publicly immunized, all the Ismailis immediately followed. This gave courage to everyone else. As the imam writes, Within a short time, statistics were firmly on my side. The death rate from plague was demonstrably far, far lower among Ismailis than in any other section of the community. Later that year, 80-year-old Queen Victoria invited our 20-year-old Imam to Windsor Palace. She praised him for his service to humanity, including his fundamental role in saving lives during the plague, and awarded him the title of Knight Commander of the Indian Empire. With our Imam's guidance, just as we surmounted the plague and reached out to support our friends and neighbors, we will surmount COVID-19. However, it won't be easy. We have already lost so many livelihoods and so many lives. Families grieve and bury loved ones alone. Today, I'd like to touch on three topics. The role of adversity in strengthening our faith. How our faith helps us ease adversity. And finally, one time-tested tradition to carry us through this crisis and help us emerge even stronger. In 1853, Imam Aga Hassan Ali Shah visited Kachawar for three days. A 65-year-old volunteer named Ismail worked day and night to help prepare everything for Mullah's visit. Later, that same Ismail traveled to Mumbai to volunteer for the Imam's mulaqat there. When Mullah arrived at the Didar Hall, he saw Ismail. He was furious and said, Ismail, I know how badly you treated my son Aga Alisha in Kachawar. He then left without giving Didar. This stunned the Jamaat and left people in tears. For three days, the Imam refused to bestow Didar. People were enraged with Ismail and blamed him for this terrible situation. Ismail was crushed, but through those three days, despite the criticism, he humbly continued his volunteer duties. On the fourth day, Imam Aga Hassan Ali Shah summoned him to Vardi and said, Ismail, I tested your faith harshly, but it was as strong as Mount Girnar. The Imam lavishly praised Ismail's patience and explained, I was testing you to see if you were the right person to care for my spiritual children. I appoint you the vizier of all of Katyawar. Mullah then showered his blessings on Ismail. As you may have guessed, Ismail was none other than the famous vizier Ismail by Ganji one of the most courageous Ismaili leaders in our history. When Vazir Ismail passed away in 1883, Imam Aga Ali Shah himself came to lead the prayers at his grave. Vazir Ismail was given the posthumous title of Pir. But look at the test the Imam put him through. Throughout our lives, we will face many tests. This pandemic, loss of loved ones, health issues, financial struggles, and other suffering. But these ordeals will make us stronger. Bir Sadr-Din has explained, Kasani vina, kweina sida. Without being tested, nobody can attain salvation. In the Ginan Satrani Morti, Sayyid Nur Muhammad Shah speaks of the trials and tribulations of our holy prophets, from Hazrat Adam to Prophet Muhammad. He then gives a stirring parable 
comparing their hardships with how gold is tested. Sona wohi saach hai, jo bahiye agan ajmaye, dhamne dham dham jaliye, sat na chhode taaye. We only know genuine gold when fire and forge test its purity. No matter what adversity it endures, it never loses its color. Brass may look like gold, but it can never pass the touchstone test. In the same way, a true momin suffers all tribulations, never wavering. Beyond our daily prayers, our Imam has encouraged us to use our tasbih to call on the divine names when we're in distress. At times of adversity, reciting Surah Nas and other particular chapters of the Quran is very common among our Syrian and other Jamaats. In Tajikistan, the Ismaili film director Umid Shah Mirzo Shirinov recently released a movie called Mushkil Kusha, The Unraveler of Difficulties, a title of Imam Ali. The film is about the Pamir Ismaili tradition of seeking solace from Mushkil Kusha at times of hardship. Mizo Shirinov's movie won the Swiss Prize for the best Tajik film at the International Film Festival. Across the Pamirs and in places like Hunza, Gilgit, and Chitra, recitation of Orad al Mu'minin, composed in utter humility by our 17th century Dai, Hussein ibn Yaqub Shah, is very common. E to amur zagaw bakshande, ma siyaru zagaru lakshande, e ze to ghayri judo ahsan na, we ze ma ghayri zambo esyan na, ma ze sharm gunah dar andishe, ma tora rahmato karam pishe. O you clement and kind forgiver, alas, blackened is our fate and we falter. O oh, you from whom there is nothing but munificence and favor. Alas, from us, there is nothing but disobedience and defiance. We are distraught by shame for our sins. But we turn to you, for you are filled with mercy and grace. Similarly, recitation of Ventigina in the times of need gives us strength and the tradition of reciting all 500 verses of Anantakaro is widespread. However, today I want to focus on a particularly important Jamaati practice that has helped us through times of crisis and beyond. In his recent Holy Talika of this past Salgira Kushali, Maulana Hazar Imam singled out a special group for blessings. He said, For centuries, one of the core backbones of our Jamaat has been our tradition of voluntary service. The global pandemic has challenged our volunteers in many ways. To all my volunteers, I convey my greatest admiration and best affectionate loving blessings. Amen. As a community, we are so lucky to have volunteers staffing the access line. Volunteers ensuring the safety of the Jamaat Khanas, Mukikamiyas regularly checking in on the vulnerable, medical doctors and other professionals providing guidance, media professionals, translators, musicians and artists helping to produce Friday night reflections and other online content for us, teachers providing religious and secular education for our children, members of councils, tariqa boards and committees planning and working around the clock to serve the Imam and the Jamaat, and countless others. Do not miss out on this opportunity to volunteer. It is a blessing to serve, and there has never been a better time to come forward. The Office of Research and Policy Development of the Corporation for National and Community Service published a study bringing together decades of research on how volunteering benefits the volunteers themselves, not just those they serve. It turns out that controlling for all other variables, those who volunteer have improved physical and mental health, improved self-esteem, greater functional ability, lower rates of depression, 
and a greater sense of purpose in life than those who don't. Volunteering builds community, establishes friendships, reduces the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, improves the school and college experience, develops skills, and makes people more competitive in the job market. A peer-reviewed study in the Journal of Health Psychology even found that volunteers experienced 44% lower mortality rates over a five-year period than those who did not volunteer. And that was after adjusting for other factors, such as age, health habits, and social support. Why should any of this surprise us? Every Ismaili is familiar with the motto on the Volunteer Corps badges, Work, no words. However, few realize that this is only part of Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah's message, sent to Ismaili Prakash magazine on June 11, 1954. Today, I will give you a small motto, and that is, work, no words. Labor for the welfare of others is the best way of improving ourselves, because results are sure and certain. If you work for yourselves, you are never happy. This is not a new idea, but this is an outcome of the experience of thousands of years of history. Every one of us has benefited from countless volunteers in our Jama'ah. How can we also contribute? Sometimes we wonder, do I have any worthwhile skills? Am I too young? Am I too old? I was moved to my core when I read about the service of an Ismaili Murid Rais Muzaffar, who lived almost a thousand years ago. In the Zubdat al-Tawarikh of the 14th century Ibn Ashri historian, Abu Qasim Qashwani, he writes that Rais Muzaffar was a wealthy Jamaati member who lived incognito among the Saljuks and owned the fortress of Girdku. For many years, the Saljuk sultans would attack Alamut, killing countless Ismailis. Once, Sultan Sanjar was traveling from Iraq to Khurasan. Hassan al-Sabah told Rais Muzaffar to treat the Sultan and his attendants with immense kindness and hospitality. So Rais Muzaffar arranged a royal feast and sent a shower of precious gifts for all the Sultan's commanders, viziers, and courtiers. At this time, Rais Muzaffar would have been about 90 years old. He was so old and frail that he had to be carried into the Sultan's presence on a stretcher. At that age and in that condition, he was serving the Imam and the Jamaat. Kashani writes that this gesture so moved the Sultan that he treated Rais Muzaffar with immense respect and tenderness. He placed him at a position higher than all the state ministers and granted him a special robe of honor. After his in-depth conversation with Rais Muzaffar, Sultan Sanjar never again attacked the Jamaat. A 90-year-old man on a stretcher Save the lives of thousands of Ismailis. As Kashani tells us, Rais Muzaffar passed away at the age of 101 years and five months, serving the Jamaat. I pray that each and every one of us can serve the Jamaat and the Imam to our last breath, just as he did. Alhamdulillah, many of our youths have taken up this call. When I was in Mombasa for meetings of the Madrasa Early Childhood Program, I went to tutor Jamaat Khana for morning ceremonies. It seemed like almost half the Jamaat comprised Ismaili youth from around the world who were in Mombasa on TKN assignments. <laughs> it was an inspiration. I hope every Ismaili youth and every member of the Jamaat will get a chance to offer a time and knowledge Nasrana one day. 
the outstanding poet Alama Iqbal, was extremely worried about the spread of materialism among Muslim youth. But he was also filled with faith that they would follow in the footsteps of their glorious ancestors in serving the community. He wrote, Tere sofe hai afrangi, tere kaalini hai irani, lahu mujko rulati hai jawano ki tan asani. Ukabi ru chabbedar hoti hai jawano mein, nazar aati hai unko apni manzil asmano mein. Nahi tera nashe man asre sultani ke gumbad par, tu shahi hai basera kar paharo ki chatano mein. Lounging on European sofas, lazing on Persian rugs, tears of blood I weep at our youth's lavish life. But when the spirit of the eagle awakens in the youth, they see their destiny in the skies. Not upon the Sultan's dome do you build your nest. You are a falcon. You live in the rocky crags of the mountain. As a Jamaat, we are the inheritors of Vazir Ismail Ganji, Bibi Imam Begum, Rais Muzaffar, and countless others. We are falcons, and it is our destiny to fly. In his talika at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Molana Hazar Imam wrote to President Malik Talib, Please convey my best paternal and my best maternal loving blessings to my worldwide Jamaat and tell them that I think of them every minute of the day, every day. And I pray for Mushkil Asan and for their peace and happiness. Amin. We must remain strong and prepare to build and to build well when this crisis passes. To fulfill this firman, let us follow our ancestors' tradition of service. If every one of us contributes in whatever way we can to serving the Imam, the Jamaat, and humanity at large, we will build a better future. Thank you, and Ya Ali Madan. Thank you so much, Dr. Virani, for sharing your thoughts with us. It is inspiring to hear the stories of our history and how we all can gain strength from them. And now, let's hear from some of you. We asked the question, what Ginan or Qasida has an emotional connection for you? Let's hear what you have to say. My name is Felicia Ganji, and I have been reciting Ginans in Jamaat Khana since the age of two. Coming from a family of Ginan reciters, I have been fortunate to have been exposed to so many beautiful and heart-touching Ginans from a very young age. While I have more than one favorite Ginan, one that is very close to my heart is the Venti Ginan, Veneti Karuchu. The tune of Veneti Karuchu, as well as its meanings, is very sweet and heart-touching, which allows the Ginan to be enjoyed by those who not only recite it, but listen to and contemplate on the Ginan as well. A Qasida that has particular deep meaning for me is Khudavando to Sultani Karim because it reminds me of the precious opportunity I was blessed with during the Diamond Jubilee Darbar where I got to recite that Qasida in Calgary in the presence of Malana Hazrima. Not only did I get to do Malababa's Didar for the first time in my life, but I also had the privilege of thanking him for his benevolence and asking him for his blessings. Verse 8 of Tamak Musadare. Actually, I have a very long list of my favorite Ginans, but this one is uh, very, very close to my heart. And in this Ginan, Pir Sadardin has very beautifully described the emotions, the urge of seeing the Imam and how his days are going to pass without seeing the Imam. He has also given an example of a fish that it is very hard for a fish 
to survive without water. Whenever I think about this Kinan or I sing this Kinan, this also brings me the memories of Mulaqat when Imam was here and we were so happy. We enjoyed with him. We had dandiyaras. We had garbas. We Imam was joking with us. And inshallah, when Imam is going to come again, we will. We all will have the moment of happiness and the moment of joys. The Kinan that is touched with the most is. Tari yashkari ne hura by Pir Said Imam Shah. The reason I chose this kinan is because it reminds me of the importance of waking up in the morning to do my bangi, and also because it helps me understand the divine blessings that come to us when partaking in this very important ceremony. Dar kol man hamak kasida ha dostaram. Dar kasida ha o bay mohay khasi gufta shuda az ki ba dar kardanash man dar zindagiyam. خوبی ها را آموختم و می آموزم. من در زندگی همیشه آرزو داشتم که در حضور مولانا حاضرمان قصیده بخوانم. و در جشن الماسی من یکی از خوش ها بودم تا توانستم که در جمع دیگر اشتراک کنیم نمان در حضور مولانا حاضرمان اجرای قصیده داشته باشم. و من خیلی ها شکر گذارم که با آرزوی هم رسیدم. و قصیده ای را که من در حضور مولانا حاضرمان اجرا نمودم قصیده ساقی با آقا بود و این یک قصیده ای است که در زندگیم یادگار خواهد من و با خواندنش و یا شنیدنش من همیشه احساس خوشی و آرامش خواهد کرد The Ginan which has particular meaning to me is Hansapuri Nagri Mahe because this is often the Gatpat Ginan that is recited back home but most importantly it reminds me of the taste and smell of Sukrit اگر به خوانی تو اشهار ناصر خسرو In this qasida, Pir Nasir Khosrow urges the moments to practice the faith and live by the ethics of the faith, not to judge others or compare yourself to others. By practicing the faith and doing good deeds, he reassures the moments that you'll surely be rewarded in the hereafter. My favorite Ginan is Ya Ali Khu Mijalis. As this Ginan is regarding Hazri Imam's Takht Nashini, it gives us happiness whenever we recite this Ginan. It brings me back to beautiful memories of Diamond Jubilee Darbar in Portugal. I can feel Hazri Imam is sitting on the Takht. This Ginan is really close to my heart. In 2007, at the beginning of Hazri Imam's Golden Jubilee, Hazri Imam came to East Africa and at the time I was living in Uganda. So it was a really unique occasion to experience the Dar in East Africa, but more than that, in Kampala within the Jamaat Khana setting. And that's why when I think back to what really stood out for me was having that opportunity to recite such a significant Kinan. It was such a magical and special time and moment. The Kasida that means the most to me is Ali Guyam Ali Juyam. The reason behind this is that during Diamond Jubilee, this was the group that I was placed in for Hizr auditions. It reminds me of all the precious memories that were made, spending time with the family that we had created, singing, praying, hugging, and excitedly awaiting the visit from our Imam. We couldn't all make it to recite in front of our Imam, but with the bonds that were formed, it really felt as though we all had. These are the precious memories and sentiments that fill my heart and soul every time I hear Ali Guyan, Ali Juyan. Since I was a little girl, I have loved singing Ginans as it makes me feel at peace and connected to the divine. In a June 2005 Didar, I had the opportunity to sing Ginan in front of Malana Hazri Mam. I recited two verses of the Ginan, Jirevala Satgura Sate, and for that reason, uh, that Ginan has a very special place in my heart. That experience filled my heart with so much love. My faith grew even stronger. And to this day, every time I think of that experience, it just brings uh, chills. And while our tradition is filled with so many wonderful kasidas and Ganans, the one I want to speak about tonight is Sayabji. One of my earliest memories of Sayabji is being a young child and being at home with my family and hearing my older cousin recite Sayabji for all of us. And she recited it with so much feeling that she really brought a lot of devotion and love into the room with her recitation. 
I feel like that's really relevant nowadays because we can't attend Jamath Khanna and we are all doing these things at home with our families. And it just shows that even though we can't go to Jamath Khanna, we still can bring those feelings into our lives and into our homes when we do things like recite our beloved Ganas and Kasidas. I have selected the second verse of the Ganan entitled, JJ Mangu Te Tuhi Deve, which means, whatever I ask of you, you grant me. This Ginan is significant to me because I was blessed with the opportunity to recite it in the 2018 Diamond Jubilee Molakat in Calgary. Indeed, my wish was granted and I am humbled. The Granth Sokriya. This Ginan is important to me because it is one of the first Ginans my daughter Amara learned from me. I was given a varo for Leto Kadar a few years back when Amara was only two and a half years old. As I prepared and practiced for this kinan, I recited it many times in front of Amara throughout the day. And to my surprise, she picked up this quite complex kinan in a matter of a few days. This reminded me of my own experience as I learned kinans from my mom. I also am reminded of the importance of sharing this tradition with the younger generation of the Jamaat and teaching them the important tradition of kinans. I really look forward to continuing to learn Ginans and teach them to Amara, and hopefully, inshallah, with my son Rian one day. It was so wonderful to hear from some Jamaati voices on the Ginans and Kasidas that resonate with them, and it was really interesting to hear your thoughts. Some of the ones that were mentioned also resonated with me, so that was really, really special. And now, we end as always with some beautiful musical expressions. This week, we will enjoy one of the masters and a personal inspiration of mine, Abida Parveen, reciting my favorite piece, The Musta Kalander, at the Aga Khan Museum. You know, I remember watching her live in Toronto a few years ago, and it was the most captivating and incredible experience I've had. So please enjoy. And join us next time as we celebrate Yome Ali. Have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, stay warm, and as always, Thank you for joining us for Friday Night Reflections. Yali Madad.
कलंदर मस्त हो मस्त कलंदर लाल मस्त हो मस्त कलंदर लाल मस्त कलंदर मस्त कलंदर मानो पीरा बचड़े तेरा ओ मानो पीरा मानो पीरा बचड़े तेरा भरन देना भरन be watching today and you are making your former city so proud what does this moment mean to you I mean it's incredibly exciting we're arriving at Mars we've been traveling there now for seven months and today is the day that we're going to touch down and I have to tell you those last seven minutes that are about to happen in a few hours here I mean they have me a bit nervous where the team is as prepared as they can be but so many things have to go right and Mars is Mars so we'll you know we're anxiously waiting to see that, that to hear that touchdown confirmed to see those first images from Mars but personally as an engineer I'm so excited that we're going to try and fly on Mars I mean we we've, we've only been flying <laughs> on Earth for about a hundred years and now we're like flying on another planet um, and actually one of my jobs one of the hats I wear is that I'm I'm the operations lead on that helicopter mission. So I've been working very closely with that mission for the past six months. And, and so for me, it, you know, it's kind of also sort of the, the, the fruits of my labor uh, that will come through when, when we attempt that flight.